The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Tucson Fire Department, Arizona on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36489. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation. Starting just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the passenger and driver side. Moving up to the face of the bumper extension, you'll find dual air horns, one on the passenger and one on the driver side. Located recessed within the front bumper, you'll find your PA speaker, electronic siren, and mechanical siren. As we move to the bumper extension, cover area is where you'll find your tubbed hose storage location with a notch and also a swivel discharge top mount. As we move to the side of the cab, you'll find marker clearance lights. Just inside of that location on the cab face, you'll find your headlight housing low and high beam headlights. High beam will be located on the inside. Moving further up, you'll find a turn indicator and also emergency warning light. There are two grab handles for gaining access to the windshield area and also three windshield wipers across the seamless one-piece windshield. As we move to the outer edge of the cab, you'll find your mirror housing flat and convexed mirrors. Moving upward to the brow of the apparatus, you'll find your ID clearance lights. Moving up onto the roof, you'll find a forward-facing floodlight. Further up onto the roof, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located with inside the light bar in the center is where you'll find the Opticom. As we move to the very top section of the light bar, directly behind is where you'll find the Go Light, which is a spotlight controlled from inside the cab area. Let's take a look at some close-ups. First, bumper extension, side-facing emergency warning light on the passenger and driver side. As we look to the hose storage location, you'll find dry deck material in the bottom section and also a rigid covered section. Lift and turn latch gains you access into this space. The next set of images are that of just general purpose to give you an idea of where we're starting on the vehicle. We're now on the driver's side body and cab. We'll move to the pump panel area. Focus in on the full side of the body. Move around to the rear of the apparatus. Once again, general view. And then we'll go ahead and move around to a full view of the passenger side. We'll take a look at the cab, pump section, and body area also on this side. And then we'll go ahead and focus in now on the driver's space. Let's first start with the door panel. All of our safety and warning placard information is located in this area here on the door panel. You'll also find a door lock and latch combination. Moving up from that area, you'll find electric window controls for all four cab windows, a grab handle, and then also a grab handle located, it's red in color at the hinge point. As we move about the right ankle, you'll find this placard indicating the date of manufacture, the five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, the VIN number, all of the fluid capacities for each component, fluid capacity, and also fluid type. As we move to the floor, you'll find a foot pedal for your air horn. About the left knee of the operator is where you'll find the master battery switch. It's a quarter turn. It's the silver switch. Moving to the right, you'll find the engine transmission ABS J1939 diagnostic port for your maintenance team. Also ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and lastly, your regen inhibit switch. Moving to the opposite side of the steering column is where you'll find your pump shift. There are instructions here from road to pump and then also instructions from pump to road. Just as a reminder, you need two green indicators when exiting the cab, pump engaged and OK to pump for pump operations. Let's move up from this location. 
where you'll find your flat mirror control. Also an indication here for your warning buzzer, one stop, two go, and three back up. As we move to the dash area on the left, you'll find your ignition and start switch. Moving inside of that location, you'll find a switch labeled EM, stands for Emergency Master. It will engage and disengage all emergency lights. Headlight switch and also a panel switch allowing you to brighten and dim lights within preview of the operator. To the right, high idle indicator and switch to engage high idle. On the left, we have some gauges for transmission, oil, def level, and water temp. On the right, you'll find front air, rear air, volts, and fuel level. Moving to the center, we find the tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right. Diagnostic information will display above and below the speedometer. Let's move slightly to the right to the rest of the dash area, full view. We'll start first with your monitor. That's at the very top section. This houses cameras for your left side, back, and right side. As we move down from this location, you'll find a siren break for your mechanical siren and also a load manager switch. Further down, additional switches for engine brake on and off, settings for low, medium, and high, a selector switch for siren or horn, perimeter lights, and mirror heat. As we move further down, you'll find the yellow diamond, which is the pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. To the right, you'll find your Allison transmission pad. We do have a digital readout push button and an informational note here, pump in drive. Let's move further to the right, where we'll identify your climate control, heat, air conditioning, and also defrost. Moving further to the right, we have a protected switch here for your MDT. As we look to the center console area, you'll find map book storage and also portable radio chargers. As we look overhead of the operator space, just to point out the yellow placard in the upper leftmost corner has the height of the vehicle 10 feet 3.5 inches, length 31 feet 5.5, gross vehicle weight rating 42,000. Also some switches here for emergency master, roof light, front warning, side warning, lower rear warning, and upper rear warning. Further to the right, additional switches for high beam flash, opticom, front flood, driver side scene, passenger side scene, and rear scene light. When any of the switches here have been activated, the light will illuminate indicating the switch is active. Moving further to the right, you'll find the control module for your go light. This is the spotlight located above the emergency warning light bar. Also your siren control module and PA speaker system. Moving further to the right, in the very front is your seat belt information, red indicating someone is in the seat and not belted, green they're in the seat and belted. Also do not move your apparatus when this light is on, indicating your ladder or compartments are open. In the center we have a swivel here for your electronic siren and PA speaker system and then just beneath that you'll find your traffic advisor module. Let's go ahead and look directly behind the seat where you'll find mounted on the surface a handle. This is for the manual operation of your cab tilt. Also 12 volt access located in this area. As we move exterior you'll find your battery voltage indicator and also shoreline inlet auto eject plug. As we move down, you'll find Michelin tires, Alcoa wheel, and also a center axle gauge indicating a sight gauge. As we move to the rear section of the cab, once again, safety and warning placard information located on the door panel, door lock and latch, window control, and a grab handle. As we move inside, the two rear facing seats do have heaters located underneath their area. And then as we move to the rear section cab wall, you'll also find flashlights located on the rear section wall floor area. There are also seats located forward facing and then also compartments on each side of those seats with roll up compartment doors and then also LED lighting and adjustable shelving inside those. On the pedestal of the seat you'll find additional storage location. D handle gains you access into this ventilated area. Looking overhead you'll find your Firecom headsets and then also push on and off white or red lens lights. To the rear section of the cab, you'll find D-handle gains you access into a smaller compartment at the rear section of the cab wall. 
As we move now to the pump panel area, let's start first with the crosslays. There are three located here, crosslay one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pump panel area. We'll start first on the far left. This is your master pump intake gauge and then also the master pump discharge gauge. In between the two of those gauges, you'll find the vacuum and pressure test gauge ports. These are currently plugged and utilized for testing purposes. As we move up to the very top, you'll find an audible speaker. The outer edge of that buzzle does rotate, allowing you to either dampen or brighten the sound. Also, you'll find your Pump Boss pressure throttle governor located here, and also panel lights. As we move to the right, you'll find an indicator OK to pump that's ensuring that you've properly engaged all pump functions inside the cab. Also, additional switching located here, including an air horn button. As we move to the left side, you'll find this warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. Because of those lines from aloft, there's the possibility of entanglement. Also, your intake relief valve, there are instructions for its operation. And then also, crosslays one, two, and three discharges. Real discharge lever. And then as we move further down, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule on the left. And then also the passenger main inlet electric switch. Also driver side one, three, and two located on this side. Moving further to the right, you'll find the deluge discharge, front discharge, passenger rear discharge, also indicating they do have digital and analog gauges located in the top section indicating the flow. Moving to the right, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line. Moving further down, you'll find the water tank level indicator. It's the blue module here. And then to the right, you'll find a rotational engine cooler, twist, not pull. And as we move down, you'll find additional discharge passenger side number four, and then also your large diameter passenger side discharge. Moving just to the right, you'll find the tank to pump valve, and then also the fire pump primer push to prime. There are also instructions for best operation at least 1000 RPMs for best practices. Let's move further down and just to the left on the pump panel area where you start with an air supply valve, also air inlet outlets, and then also the uh, two and a half inch discharges here located on the driver's side. Let's move slightly to the right within the same panel where you'll find a warning placard indicating pressure hazard. These caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, Pierce logo American Flag Eagle is your large diameter pump inlet. And then also an additional warning placard here regarding fall. If you're climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. Just underneath this, you'll find the RPM counter. This is for testing purposes with those vacuum and pressure discards. Moving to the left, you're going to find a warning placard here regarding do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. Also, warning placard, only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment, and that's only after proper training. We do have foam tank A and foam tank B fill locations located in the lower section, and then also the driver's side auxiliary inlet 2.5 inch locally controlled ball valve female coupling. Your watchers placard is located here indicating a 1,250 GPM pump and then also minimum operation maintenance schedule which we'll come back to in just a moment. Your pump drain and then also just beneath that the manual pump shift. And then as you look to the left you'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Let's move back to the watchers placard indicating some information here about your uh, pump. It is a CSU model. 1,250 GPM pump. As we move down from this location, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI, associated GPM on the left-hand side of the placard, and associated RPMs on the right-hand side for test pressures, govern speed 2,400, five-digit job number in the upper left. As we move to the running board here, you'll find a tubbed storage location, dry deck material, and also belts to hold your hose in place. As we move to the first compartment, roll-up compartment door, it's where you're going to find SCBA storage location and then also your battery charger. When plugged into shoreline power, this will become active maintaining batteries. As we move to the next compartment back, roll-up compartment door, LED lighting, and then also you'll find SCBA bottle storage or packet storage located here in this first compartment. 
Michelin tires, Alcoa wheels. Let's move just up from this location here where you'll find a SCBA bottle storage with retaining strap and then also ultra low sulfur diesel fill, that's the silver cap, as we expose the blue cap for a 4.5 US gallon def fill location. Once again, blue cap. Let's move to the next compartment to the very rear of the apparatus where you'll find two adjustable shelves and LED lighting. As we move around to the side of the vehicle, all compartments are now open. Let's move now from this location to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify a few items within this area. First, let's start in the very side with your rear scene lights and then also your push button here for stop, go, and reverse. As we move up to this area, you'll find attic storage ladder and long-handled tool storage or pike poles. Also, as we move up, hose bed dividers. As we move to the center area, you'll find a warning placard indicating entanglement hazard. Because of those lines coming from the hose bed, there's the possibility of entanglement. In the center, your traffic advisor. And then just beneath that, a recessed backup camera. As we move to the right, you'll find an additional 2.5 inch discharge. And then I would like to point out a few warning placards here. Once again, pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Also, please do not ride on the vehicle while it is in motion. Let's move down to the lower compartment at the rear of the apparatus. Three adjustable shelves, and then just to the left, you'll find a warning placard here regarding when climbing onto the vehicle, always face the vehicle. Close up here of the passenger rear discharge, once again, two and a half inch. As we move around to the passenger side, all compartment doors are in the open position. Let's go ahead and start now at the rear compartment. This is a pass-through compartment, adjustable shelf in the top section, pull out tray full extension on the lower portion release mechanism located on the left hand side underneath the shelf area SCBA storage also located in that compartment um, as we move to the center compartment tool board front and back side D handle gains you access to the back side release mechanism located on the very far right of the hinge it will lock into position also, SCBA bottle storage here, retaining straps with each of these three. As we move to the lower section, Michelin tires, once again, Alcoa wheel. Just in front of this location, we do have a warning placard also. Uh, I would like to point out extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures do exhaust while the engine is operational or in regen mode. Please be cautious where you park your vehicle. Let's move into this compartment at the very uh, front section you'll find a tray and then also SCBA located within this compartment. We'll go ahead and move now to the pump panel area. Starting first in the pan door which is our foam A and foam B drains. As we move to the upper portion of the pump panel warning placard entanglement hazard because of those cross lays. As we move down from this location the number four discharge two and a half inch and then also your power equipment rack there are instructions for its operation to raise and to lower also some danger information because of the moving equipment rack as we move to the right you're going to find your cab lift we do have some instructions here on its operation and also caution and danger and also a warning regarding check all cab steps are folded up before raising the cab down at the very bottom we have an additional air horn push button as we move just inside the pan door in this location, this is going to be the hydraulic equipment rack. This is the fill location for the hydraulic equipment rack. Let's go ahead and move down to the bottom section of the pump area where we're going to find a pressure hazard warning and then also large diameter passenger side and number three, two and a half inch discharge. That a handle located behind the driver's seat is for this operation for manual tilt and also raise or lower on the uh, valve location here on the black handle. As we move to the lower portion, you'll find your fire pump primer drain and then all of your color coded discharge drains. Also a passenger side auxiliary inlet ball valve locally controlled female inlet color coded and labeled discharge drains across the very bottom section of the pump panel area also in the running board you're going to find a hose storage location dry deck and then also tie downs for that hose 
As we move up to the crosslay, once again, crosslay one, two, and three, same configuration as the driver's side. We're to the rear cab wall where we have an additional storage compartment. D-handle gains us access into that compartment. Also directly above, you'll find LED water level indicator and a side facing scene light. As we move inside the cab in the rear section, affix the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock, latch, window control, and a grab handle. Easily accessible, push on and off red or white lens lights. General view here of the rear section of the cab, showing the compartments in the upper portion, passenger and driver side. Also additional fly lights with charging located in the step area. Inside the compartments, you'll find adjustable shelving and LED lighting. As we move to the forward section, you'll find an additional storage location with additional seat belts, and then also the location where you'd gain access. Lift and turn latch will gain you access to the rear portion of the engine for your daily checks for oil and transmission. As we move in between the seats, we're going to find our main unit radio and then also we have some chargers here for portable radios. As we move to the exterior front axle, visual sight gauge for the axle, Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels. As we move into the officer space, once again affixed to the door panel, safety and warning placard information, door lock and latch combination, window control and a grab handle. As we move to the forward section of the dash, your vehicle is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, an airbag. Please do not mount anything within this area. Also to the right on the A pillar is where you'll find the fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. There are also two foot pedals located here for pushing the air horn and then also mechanical siren. We do have a siren brake push button and then also a 12 volt access via USB. We have your two mounts here for your electronic devices. As we move to the air horn and also mechanical siren push buttons. As we move overhead in the officer space, we'll identify a few things here. Starting in the upper right, you'll find the go light control module. This is the on off and control module for the spotlight. Also to the left, you'll find your firecom control module. And then moving further to the left is where you'll find your unit radio. As we move toward the center, you'll also find a speaker for your unit radio mounted just underneath near the visor holder. As we look to the center, you'll find your headsets and then also push on and off white or red lens lights. As we move to the exterior, this is your ladder, 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof, and a 10 foot attic on your ladder rack. Let's go ahead and move now up onto the top section of the vehicle at the rear area. We'll find your hose bed cover. As we look to the hose bed cover, you'll find these yellow reflective diamonds indicating a safe walking distance for your firefighter safety. Also, as we look to the hose bed, you'll find hose dividers. There are four. As we move more to the dunnage area, we'll identify a few items within the dunnage area. First, starting on the outer edges of the truck by the hose bed is where you'll find additional hatch compartments. These do house LED lights inside. Let's go ahead and move now to the dunnage area. And first, where we'll find our top location for water fill location. And then also, as we move just to the right of this location, we also have top fill location for foam tank A and also top fill location for foam tank B. On each of these, we do have warning placard information regarding do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. As we move further forward, you'll find your red line and also your master stream device located in the center. There is also a push button on the top section for the reel rewind. Moving to the cab front, you'll find some warning placards here indicating not a walking surface and that this may be slippery. There are two of these located on each driver's side and passenger side rear section of the cab area. 
The next set of images are going to be for your purposes of just identifying items within the area of the chassis and engine. That will conclude the chassis photos and engine photos. Congratulations, Tucson Fire Department, Arizona, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 36489. If you have any questions, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.